Good day, Ron McFarland here, and there are three of digital forensics, cyber forensics, if you will. And I'm going to go over, here's what the agenda is today. Real quickly, chapter three in the text, a quick overview. Uh, I'm not going to read the text for you and just highlight some items in this brief video. Uh, again, mind tap this week, we do have a lab exercise and assignments. And in our LMS, uh, we have our weekly discussion. Please continue to uh, discuss items in in our weekly discussions as that really kind of fleshes out what we're up to. Some of the objectives uh, for this chapter is list digital evidence storage formats or several that you should be familiar with. Explain ways to determine the best acquisition methods. So there's some reading on that. Uh, describe contingency planning for data acquisitions. You, know, you always have to think a step ahead and explain how to use acquisition tools. Again, our conversation over the last two weeks was really about planning, 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 uh, getting the digital evidence is a lot of fun sculpting it, carving out what you need, but the planning process is critically important, as we talked about. Also, explain how to validate data acquisitions. There's some discussion in that. Uh, using RAID, there's several different RAID methods uh, that are identified in the chapter text. And go ahead, read through that and get familiar with those. Explain how to use remote network acquisition tools. Again, remote network acquisition tools, let's say if you're in a corporate office in Chicago and you need to pull down data from a store, let's say in El Paso, Texas, uh, you would use those kind of remote acquisition tools. There's some discussion about that in the chapter, which is pretty important. List other forensics tools for data acquisitions. Again, our course pretty much centers in on the common tools. There's a lot more out there uh, that are a little more specific and dialed in. If it's a large organization, oftentimes they'll have uh, their own tools, believe it or not. Other organizations like the DOD will develop their own tools and will not distribute those tools. So um, that may be the environment, if you will. So let's, a couple of items. Understanding for storage formats for digital evidence. Now there's three formats, raw, proprietary format. So that, that's all over the board, depending on the tool set you're using. And the advanced forensics format, the AFF format is fairly commonly used as well as a raw format. That raw format, most tools will accept that, AFF as well. Acquisition methods, I wanna focus in on the four items in the middle, creating a disk to image file, or disk to disk file, or a logical disk to disk, or a disk to data file. Now read about some of those differences there. Creating a sparse data copy of a file or a folder, as it says, you're really selecting parameters of that. Again, everything requires that you use a bit copy initially. Store your bit copy uh, and then uh, work on a secondary copy or certain extractions. Everything needs to get documented as well. A little more information about uh, disk to disk uh, image file, disk to image file. Um, I highlighted one item on here. Copies are for bit for bit replications of the original drive. Again, what I usually do is make at least two of those copies, store one away where it is always, you always do some sort of hash value and tag it. And the secondary one, you can then sculpt it, if you will. Oftentimes I've seen it where people will have the original bit by bit, and then the secondary, they may even use a third file that they'll use for the actual evidence. So it depends on um, your uh, organization's requirements, but certainly you want that bit to bit. Uh, creating a disk to disk copy. Um, again, the tools, common tools are NCASE and XWAYS. XWAYS is very common. Um, a little bit of a discussion, but not as in depth as it should be in this uh, particular uh, chapter. But XWAYS is very commonly used. NCASE, of course, uh, will have some of that in the labs as well as um, other items as well. Contingency, contingency, contingency planning for image acquisitions. Again, make at least two digital ev images of evidence. Copy host protected area of a disk drive as well. So read about that. Um, again, you want to replicate the entire environment if necessary. You want to store the copies of those images, if you will, and document that. Whole disk encryption, read about that. BitLocker, if you will, would be whole disk encryption. What are you going to do if you run into that situation? Some tips in the book as well. Acquisition, acquisition tools, again, there's a list of acquisition tools for the Windows environment, uh, the Linux, and the Mac OS. Read through that as well. 
Um, here's a little bit of a note about the WinFE. Enables you to build a Windows forensic boot disk, if you will, or USB drive. Read that through. It's kind of an interesting way of acquiring evidence. And uh, Linux as well, Linux, Mac. Uh, look through that as well. Access data, FTK. Oh my goodness, that is one of the big dogs in the game. So uh, you'll do that in your labs throughout the course. You'll have some you'll have some ability to use FTK. Uh, that is a big one. There's a separate certification for just using access data FTK aside from the more generic uh, digital forensic certs. So if you're looking for a good search, uh, consider access data FTK. You can get a student version of that as well to download on your own computer and study through the books. There's a lot of books on Amazon as well for the study guides for the access data uh, certification. Other certs as well, we'll explore other certs in this class, and we'll chat about that in our discussion area. Validating uh, data acquisitions. Anytime you grab data, you'll run some sort of uh, validation technique like an MD5. We talked about that before, or SHA-1, SHA-512, CRC-32. Those are essentially hash uh, verifications, if you will. So you can always compare the hash values of two files, for example, your stored file and perhaps another file that you're working with and see that they, they match because of the hash values that you've created for that. Anyway, RAID, uh, again, uh, RAID different flavors, if you will. So read through that. You may be involved in uh, acquisition for RAID storage, if you will. Remote network acquisition. Again, the scenario where you might be in Chicago and you're downloading uh, a, a stores uh, or a, a center's uh, data to uh, investigate it, if you will. ProDiscover, NCase, a lot of other tools noted in the book as well. Uh, remote acquisition with F response. Look through that because I, I noted that uh, it's an, a vendor neutral remote access. That's commonly used. So that's one that you definitely want to get under your belt. Other acquisition tools, a whole list here. SourceForge is also pretty commonly used as well in this list. And in summary, forensic data acquisition are stored in three different formats, raw, proprietary, and AFF. Again, I think the raw and the AFF are a little more common that you can port around, of course, because proprietary depends on the tool you have. Some other tools will take in proprietary formats as well, and we'll convert that. Um, data acquisition methods, just to image. Disk to disk, logical disk to disk, or disk to data file. Read through that. And sparse data copies, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, several tools available. A lossless compression is acceptable. R read through what lossless compression is. Again, the second bullet plan, the digital ev evidence, as well as the acquisition. Plan for contingencies. What will happen if things go wrong? Always have like a one or two step back that you can then roll forward with perhaps a different pathway. Again, everything gets documented. Uh, a good documentation is what uh, digital forensics experts as well as um, um, expert witnesses need to have. Write blocking, read through that, and always validate the acquisition. That way you can always verify in court. Again, uh, preferred acquisition tool is uh, DCFLDD, not DD, uh, in, in the Linux environment. Read that through. Physical write blocker devices are always essential. If you gather a, a, you know, the old standard hard drive with either disk or solid state disk, make sure you always use that write blocker. That write blocker serial number will be written on your documentation as well. Because if it's called in the question, you can say, oh, it's uh, this brand this serial number, and I documented it, and here's what we used. And I also have the hash value of it. So you will be asked about that if you go to court. I uh, went uh, to acquire RAID disk. Um, again, the uh, acquisition tool is pretty important. Also, setting up that acquisition tool to acquire uh, the data correctly is, is key, of course. And remote network acquisition tools, as I briefly noted here, uh, you will run into that if you're working in a large organization like Department of Defense or a large, let's say, department store chain. Are there any department store chains anymore? <laughs> or Amazon. Uh, you're, they're pulling certain data, if you will, to make sure uh, that uh, if there's any kind of theft, they can track it down, if you will. Anyway, that's a, a quick overview of what we're up to in week three. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, get your hands on those labs. Look for you in the discussion questions. 
in uh, the LMS as well. You take care and thank you.